Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. If you do have an encounter to tell, send to SoCal Sasquatch Organization at gmail.com. We now have SCSO Keep On Squatching t-shirts available. See link in description below. Join the community and show it off wherever you go. SCSO Report Number 100134 Thank you viewers who entrust us with your encounters. Today's encounter comes to us from a subscriber in Oregon. Name and exact location withheld to protect. Class Alpha. State Oregon. Howard Road, the next road junction, is with a BLM 23428. Stay on this road as all of the side roads end in log landings. Some of the roads have locked gates. The road will junction with another BLM road. This road goes downhill and the last time I went through there it was like driving through a temperate rainforest. Off of this road are several log landing roads. Just stay on the main road and follow it around the hill. Off to the left the fire tower can be seen on the hilltop. The helipond is on the left side of the road and there is a single track dirt road that runs down the right side of the pond. This is where the encounter happened. The encounter. I had backed my truck into the road that goes around the pond and got my tools out to dig the grave. I had just finished the grave and was making sure that my cat Thomas was ready to be buried. I had collected a bunch of large rocks to cover the grave to deter any wild animals from disturbing it. Since the area was known for being good habitat for black bear, I took my sidearm with me just in case. When I laid Tommy in the grave, I noticed that the birds had gone quiet. They had been chirping and calling all the time up to then. That was when I first heard something heavy moving through the bushes and small trees around the pond. Figuring that I was hearing and smelling a musky smell, I pulled my pistol and chambered around. What happened next I was not prepared for. My late father and I hunted up there frequently after I left the Navy. While we had seen bobcats, the occasional puma, the ever-present coyotes, and the occasional black bear, I was not overly concerned about any of them as long as I stayed alert to my surroundings. After I chambered around, there was a very loud huff-like sound across the pond from me. With that noise, I thought that I had a big black bear scoping me out. That was when I heard what sounded like something big and heavy started stomping through the brush. <clears throat> These sounds made several circuits around the pond and me, stomping through the brush and small trees. When it passed through some larger timber, I heard the sound of branches breaking. Not the little ones by the sound they made, they had to have been up to four inches thick. I was just about finished when across the pond from a tall snag of about 18 inches came crashing down. I heard the snap and looked up in time to see it fall. About then I began to feel very uneasy. I do not scare very easily, not after getting shot by people who hate Americans, but I was very uneasy about what was happening. By now I figured it was not the typical black bear. A big boar could have knocked the, that snag over, but the sounds from the brush sounded like something on two feet and extremely strong. I finished putting the rocks on the grave and started to put my tools back in the pickup. When I walked back down for the last tools, a branch nearly eight feet long landed in the pond. At that point, I knew it was time to get out of there. As I pulled back out onto the main road, another branch, this one maybe four feet long and nearly three inches thick, landed in the back of my pickup. I did not stop to see if it dinged the bed until I got down off the hill. When I looked the branch over, I found that it was a green branch, not from logging debris in the area. 
The wood was still moist and the pitch was fresh as well. I did not realize that I had left my video recorder running after I stopped. On reviewing the recording, there was nothing there. That to me showed that the creature was thinking tactically and avoided showing itself as it circled around me. I did not take time to search for footprints. I had the impression that it wanted me out of there and the branch throwing was an escalation of aggression towards me and probably would have developed into stone throwing. I went back up there a week later to plant some flower bulbs and found a water washed rock of nearly 20 pounds on each of the three tiny graves there by the pond. It made for a very interesting couple of hours. When I drove out of there, I stopped to examine the fruit in a couple of old homestead orchards. There was barely anything on the trees and blackberry briars had grown up and over most of the trees. Checking the couple of streams that are usually running that time of the year, they were just a collection of stagnant pools full of dead fish. The bunches of salmon berries that grew near the streams were gone, so it appeared that the only source of water was the pond, which still had fish and bullfrogs in it. That could explain why the creature kept escalating the aggression until I left. I never saw the creature at any time during the encounter and there were no vocalizations other than the loud huff I heard. Despite this encounter, I will continue to use the site as a pet cemetery. I will also continue to pick wild berries up there as well, just have to leave enough to keep the big guy happy. Please like and subscribe below so we can continue our Squatch operations.